Now it's on the crystal field splitting in tetrahedral coordination entities. In tetrahedral coordination entity formation, the d orbital splitting is inverted and is smaller as compared to the octahedral field splitting. For the same metal, the same ligand and metal ligand distances, it can be shown that delta T is equal to 4 by 9 delta naught. Consequently, the field and the orbital splitting energies are not sufficiently large for forcing pairing and therefore slow spin configurations are rarely absorbed. So, more, one of the most distinctive features of a transient metal complex is that their wide range of colors. This means that some of the visible spectrum is being removed from white light. As it passes through the sample, so the white light that emerges is no longer available. The color of the complex is complementary to that which is absorbed. You can see it here, some of the lights are removed. Here is the color in coordination compounds, here is the coordination entities and the wavelength of the light absorbed, the color of light absorbed and color of coordination entities. Let me name it as it's penta, amine, chloro, cobalt, penta, amine, aqua, cobalt, hexa, amine, cobalt, hexa, Cyanide or cyano cobalt, tetra aqua copper, or it can be written as copper water complex, hexa aqua titanium. The complementary color is the color generated from the wavelength left over. If green light is absorbed by the complex, obviously it appears red. The color in the coordination compounds can be readily explained in terms of crystal field theory. Consider for example the hexa aqua titanium which is violet in color. This is an octahedral complex where the single electron titanium is a 3D1 in the metal D orbital which is in the T2G level and it's in the ground state of the complex. Yes, obviously. This is an tetrahedral complex where the single electron in the metal D orbital is in the T2G in the ground state. The next highest state available for the electron is the empty EG level. If light corresponding to the energy of yellow green region is absorbed by the complex, it would excite the electron from here to here. From T2 to G level to EG level. It will become 2 to G1, this one become in EG of 0 become 2 2 G of 0 and EG of 1 complex and appears violet in color. This becomes violet now. So the crystal field theory attributes the color of the coordination compound to DD orbital transition of the electron. The absence of ligands, the crystal field splitting does not occur and hence the substance is colorless. For example, the removal of water from this on heating renders it colorless. Similarly, I got my anhydrous copper sulfate which is white. With the water, it will become blue in color. The influence of the ligand and the color of your complex may be illustrated by considering the complex hexa aqua nickel, that's nickel water complex, which forms a nickel 2 chloride and it is dissolved in water.
Here is the following series of reactions and their associated color changes. You are able to see I got a nickel water complex or uh, it's reacted with uh, ethane 1,2 diamine. It provides a nickel water complex and uh, ethane 1,2 diamine and your water the green color became a pale blue. You are able to see this here. Yeah. The green color became pale blue. This one. Now I got my pale blue color and once again I try to add your ethan diamine. You got a blue or purple color of NiH2O2 En2 with water. This color. Once again, if I try to add ethane 1 comma 2 diamine, it becomes a violet nickel ethane 1 comma 2 diamine. This is the one. This is how the color changes are happening from green to pale blue, violet, and the next color. This one is purple and violet.